Yo, what's up my Hawaii bros? What's up kings? What's up guys? What's up stars? What's going on with it? Hey man, before we get started with the video, go ahead and subscribe, you know what I'm saying? Hit that like button and smash the notification bell. You know what I mean? But other than, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into the video. And this one is from uh, an ask. Um, I had a, uh, a queen who uh, DM'd me on Instagram about this topic. And, you know, how do high-value men or men in general feel about dating women with children? Well, here's the thing, okay? Um, every child deserves a father figure, just as well as a mother, right? Because we know that the, the original family was uh, Asar, Aset, and Heru, right? That's the original family, okay? So with that said, that our ancient ancestors set the paradigm for a balanced family, uh, you got to have the masculine, you got to have the feminine, and Asar and Aset, and then you have the child, which was Haru. And, you know, that's the paradigm. So with that said, every child deserves that. Now, today, you know, uh, especially in the uh, black community, the, you know, um, it's not as prevalent as it used to be uh, prior to uh, integration. Now, before we were integrated, we had a lot of black families, uh, complete black families with... Uh, you know, husbands, wives, and, you know, children. Uh, but now today, because we know all the machinations of uh, the socioeconomic construct of, uh, you know, white supremacy and things like that, the crime bill, et cetera, you know, and the other, you know, machinations that are set in the place, a lot of uh, black families have been dispersed. And then uh, you also have, you know, PTSD and not, post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, disorder. I mean, uh, I'm talking about post-slavery post traumatic stress disorder. So P, post-slavery post, post traumatic disorder, okay? So what's that, PSDT? <laughs> but you, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Correction, right? post-traumatic slave right, so disorder. With that said, you know, we, we know that a lot of our families were separated you know, uh, mothers were sold off, fathers were killed off and sold off, babies were fed to alligators and things like that. A lot of, uh, you know, terrible, traumatic, atrocious things uh, were happening uh, during that uh, chattel slavery period. So uh, a lot of that stuff has been passed down in the genes and in the mindsets and also down into the DNA. And you have, so, so, so as a result of all these factors of, of history and colonialism and chattel slavery, integration, uh, machinations of socioeconomic, the, the machinations of the socioeconomic construct of uh, white supremacy and things like that, um, we have this uh, negative paradigm where a lot of black families just don't have a lot of fathers. Uh, like for me, for example, I don't know my father. You know what I'm saying? I think I only have one childhood memory. Uh, I think I was maybe six or seven years old. And, um, you know, I, I remember he, he was nice to me or whatever, but I only have like one little memory. And, it, and I think that he made me a, a homemade bazooka out of some cans that we taped up together. And me and my cousin at the time, when we were boys, would put like some, some lighter fluid in it and make a wick and put tennis balls or rocks in the front of the can, you know what I'm saying? Light it and boom, made, made a bazooka. And he had made that for us. And that's the only uh, memory that I have of my father. And I guess that's why I'm so destructive, right? With martial arts and shit like that, I don't know. But um, case in point is, I don't have, you know, any negative uh, things to say about him at all. Cause you know, anytime my mom spoke of him, I wouldn't say that she spoke of him highly, she just said, you look just like your daddy. You look just like your daddy. You look just like, you look just like your daddy. You know, if I make a, 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 a facial expression, she's like, oh, Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? But that was the extent of it. So, um, you know, with that said, you know, uh, I, I share that with you guys to say that, you know, I'm also uh, a victim, as it were, of growing up without a father. But, you know, fortunately enough for me, my mom was very crafty and understanding uh, how important, you know, having a masculine father-like figure is in your life. You, you see what I'm saying? So 
she would always send me. I grew up in Miami. I was born in Okeechobee, Florida, okay? But grew up in Miami. So what my mother would used to do, um, and you know, with spring break, um, summer break, you know what I'm saying? And the winter break, she would always send me home to Okeechobee uh, to live, you know what I'm saying? With my great grandmother. So I grew up with her, you know what I'm saying? And my uncles, my Uncle Mac, my Uncle Marshall, that's my Uncle Debo, my real life Uncle Debo. Shout out to um, Debo Tiny Lester, who just passed a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, I got a real Uncle Debo. He's swole and everything, got a lazy eye, been in prison, all that, right? So he was my real masculine figure. You know what I'm saying? I want to be, grow up and be big and strong like him. You know what I'm saying? And my Uncle Mac, he wasn't no push, he ain't no pushover either. But my Uncle Mac was more like a, a father figure. You know, hold the flashlight while he fixed shit. He was a, he was a local electrician around the um, around the small town of Okeechobee, and he would take me along with him, you know, on his jobs. You see what I'm saying? So uh, he learned. He taught me how to work with my hands, change a tire, do simple stuff around the house, electrician work. Excuse me. You know things like that. He he helped me to become uh, a man. Taught me how to drive. Uh, first time I ever shot a gun was 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 with him. You know, that kind of thing. I had a few other uncles, but they ended out of prison. But each and every uncle in my life were instrumental. You see what I'm saying? They were like big brothers to me. You see what I'm saying? So I've always had like masculine figures around my life. And I've always been attracted to the masculine. You know what I'm saying? This is why, you know what I'm saying? I still like action fucking movies and, and macho fucking guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I grew up watching guys like Jim Kelly and Fred Williamson. Um... Richard Roundtree, you see what I'm saying? In my teenage years, uh, Ja White, Van Damme, Steven Seagal, motherfucking, uh, you know, Bruce Lee and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They all kind of like Schwarzenegger, Stallone, all them niggas, right? They all like, uh, you know, they help mold, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this masculinity that you see before you, you see what I'm saying? you know, in the movies. And I was always attracted to it because uh, I just felt like these figures that I saw in the films were an expression of who I am. Who I am. You see what I'm saying? And you can ask any woman that's ever been with me, any woman that's ever been with me, they would tell you, hey, yeah, AC is a real masculine guy. He's a macho man, you know, that kind of thing. So my whole point on where I'm going with this is that it's very important for children, whether it be little boys or little girls to have a masculine figure uh, as they grow up, because it's very, very important. Um, a woman cannot just raise a child alone. Now, can you do it? Yes. Are you strong and independent? Yes. We ain't talking about all that. We already know that. But what we're saying is, you know, you can be as strong as you want as, as and, and as independent as you want, but it takes a, a masculine man to, sh to teach a child, especially a boy, masculinity. And I actually did a, a video about this. So I'll go ahead and, and I'll leave a link for it down below um, where, I, where I actually mentioned that masculinity is taught. It's a learned behavior. You see what I'm saying? So, and, and you know, when the masculine is around, this is what's going to uh, deter LBGTQ and all those kind of shit that's uh, pervasive right now, because this is what the, uh, the matrix or the main society of the elites, this is what they want. They want LGBTQ. They want transsexism. They want transhumanism. They want, uh, you know, all this other kind of stuff going on. This is... Uh, the, the way of the future. So masculine, masculinity in and of itself is waning. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to the black man. You know what I'm saying? They want, they want to continue. Uh, they're not, they're not, they have not begun. This, is, this has been ongoing for a couple of decades, ever since integration. You see what I'm saying? Um, they want to continue to de-emasculate Black men in particular. Correction. Emasculate. You see what I'm saying? This is why you see a lot of the celebrities, these uh, actors and rappers putting on dresses and shit. You see what I'm saying? This is why you, you can't see one mainstream Hollywood movie with a real masculine guy. It's not fucking gay or, or you know what I'm saying? It's not fucking, uh, you know, a sidekick or some goofy ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? When I grew up watching TV, you know what I'm saying? As a boy... I used to watch motherfucking Good Times on TV. You know what I'm saying? Good Time. You know, every, everybody could identify with James. James is that strong ass father, father figure, right? You know what I mean? Um, but if you look at even sitcoms, 
Like in the 70s, it, it was that. That was the first black family. It was strong. You had a mother, father, and children, right? And then, um, and then in the 80s, when I was a teen, damn, you see the Cosby show. You see what I'm saying? Now, they were aristocrats, middle class. Heathcliff was a doctor. Claire was a, a lawyer. They had five children, but, you know, Heathcliff was masculine. You see what I'm saying? He was a masculine man, and uh, but they were real, well, well balanced and a, and a good family. The Cosby Show is one of those last classics. You see what I'm saying? That you can see a healthy black family. You see what I'm saying? Um, and this is why they, they didn't let Bill get out unscathed with that. You see what I'm saying? You, you see what Bill is today. And you know you know that whole setup, that whole bullshit with that, right? Anyway, that's another topic that I don't want to discuss at this point. But uh, but let's let's look at how they twist it up. Look, look, look at family matters, right? Another black family, you know what I mean? You had the cop, with, you know, the Winslows. You had the cop, the mother, but the mother was what? She was more of the uh, the the um, the shot call. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though Carl, I guess I don't forget what his name was. Even though Carl was a cop. He, he he wasn't the head of the household. The woman was. So here you start to see black masculinity take a dive, right? And then you had Urkel who was goofy and nerdy and a beta male and a simp and all that. You know what I'm saying? So boom. You can see how television and and the, the whole paradigm of movies, television, extreme feminists and feminism and all that kind of stuff has infiltrated uh, the psyche of... Uh, <laughs> you know, particularly uh, black families and overall men too, because it's not just black, but it's it's mostly black people, black men are mostly affected by this uh, wave of extreme feminism and the uh, the emasculation of being a man, a masculine fucking man. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can see that, and then uh, and you know, in sitcoms today, you know, fathers are basically uh, buffoons and movies. You know. It, it, it's just crazy. And then, unfortunately, you know, a lot of black men today, we just have this uh, this stigma of uh, not taking care of our children. It's simply not true. You know, uh, I have a son. You see what I'm saying? And um, love him very dearly. Ace, what's up, bro? Love you, man. So, um, you know, he he watches my videos. He learns. And, and he's always critiquing me and telling me, you know, how much he enjoys my stuff. You know, I've always been a great teacher to my son, a great leader to my son, all of that. And I'm very proud of him. So um, to answer this woman's question that, you know, came in my DMs, I think it's perfectly OK for a man to date a woman with a child, whether it be a, uh, a, 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 a daughter or whether it be a, a son. Hold on one second. This music is a little bit too loud. <laughs> <clears throat> so, like for example, I, I've been married before. I was married for about seven years. You feel me? And so my my ex wife, when I met her, you know what I'm saying? She had already had like a two year old son. Uh, he was going on, or at least going on two. And uh, the reason why that worked out is because, you know, basically her her son's father. I'm not going to disclose any names. Um, he was kind of absentee. I didn't really see him a lot. You see what I'm saying? So he, he didn't really like, he wasn't a fact. He didn't really fucking interfere. And then when we did meet, it was cool. He respected me as a man. You see what I'm saying? But I had full control over my household as a, uh, as a man. And that's just the way it should be. So I would say that if you're dating a woman that has a child, then make sure that you're the head of that fucking household because nigga, you are, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You, you're basically stepfathering at this point. Now, that doesn't take away that he's not your biological son and they will never see you as their biological father, you being a stepfather, but they will respect you as, you know, their father and they will respect you as that. Now, if you're loving and genuine and a mentor, they, they will respect you a lot and, and come to love you as my uh, step stepson did, you know, at the time, obviously uh, me and his mother, his mother and I were not together anymore. You know, I've been divorced for quite some time now, but, um, you know, and that that's just that. And uh, the only other time that I've been a stepfather was with my ex fiance. I, I got engaged one more time. Uh, we didn't we didn't end up getting married, but <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to disclose any names either. But, um, you know, 
that that was cool too. Why? Because uh, his father was pretty much absentee. Like the nigga just wasn't there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he lived out of state and just basically absentee. So uh, during um, that experience of being a stepfather, you know, he lived with me and my fiance at the time. We all lived together. I was head of the household and, you know, I, I was pretty much raising him like he was mine. You see what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, he loved me. He cared about me. Mr. AC, he would always call me Mr. AC, you know, very polite, very good boy. And, um, you know, we, we was cool. Uh, you know, you know, obviously I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm kind of rigid. I got principles. I'm disciplined. I'm organized. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really, you know, like that aspect of me as he got a little older, but, um, whatever, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, so what, what, what am I saying? Guys, you want to, if you're going to date a woman with children, becoming a stepfather is a huge responsibility because she, you know, that child that she, that she has, whether it be boy or girl is an extension of her. And so, uh, these are some factors you're going to have to deal with. I would say deal with women, uh, who has fathers that are, that are absentee. That's not trying to, you know, get back with them. That's not trying to rekindle something that's not fucking crazy. That's not jealous of you. That's not trying to sabotage you and shit like that. And someone who's reasonable and mature that you guys can just talk, sit down and try to get on the same, on the same page about things. I would say that you should not put your hands, excuse me, you shouldn't put your hands on your woman. Of course not. Right. And also the children, you shouldn't like physically discipline a biological child that's not yours. And I'm talking about spanking, right? I don't believe in whooping. I never whooped my son, you know, but a spanking, a pop on the hand or a pop on the butt. No, don't do that. Okay, fine. You know, but as far as grounding and punishment, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You guys got to come to terms with that type of agreement. And you and the mother are going to have to, you, the mother and the father is going to have to come in terms with that agreement. And they're going to have to trust your judgment and yield to it and submit to it. That's the only way it's going to work. Now, ideally, you want to be with a woman who doesn't have any children at all. And that way you can sire your own children and raise your own children. You know, just like lions do. Lions, <laughs> lions. you know, when they take over lion pride, what do they do? They, they kill off all the children of their previous lion king. So that puts the, uh, the other, you know, lioness, you know, into heat. And they then he sires his own children and to ensure his bloodline. I'm not saying that you literally act like a fucking lion, lion and kill kids off. No, I'm not saying that. But understand the logic behind it. You see what I'm saying? Ideally. ideally but we don't want any orphan children out there. We don't want children in foster care. We, want, we don't want children uh, being adopted. They don't have to be. You see what I'm saying? So every child deserves a masculine father figure. You know what I mean? And those are the circumstances where... Those are the only circumstances where I would entertain, um, you know, being a stepfather to a child. Now, here's my caveat. This is where I draw the line. Now, I would say this. If you're dating a woman, right... <clears throat> and she has two or more children from different fathers and she's never been married, I wouldn't advise that, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is just me. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can hate me for it. I don't know. It's just what it is. That's my rule. She's got two or more children and she's never been married, then, you know, that's, that's community pussy, bro. That's community box. You know what I'm saying? The Yoni not safer. She's just out here, you know, laying down. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, just allowing guys to, uh, you know, inseminate her, you know, and, you know, I did a, a, a video on micro chimerism. You can check that out. I might put a, a, a link in that description as well, but women, you know, they're reservoirs, you know what I'm saying? Um, they're the creators, right? We come here through them, uh, from the ethers into this, this paradigm, into this physical reality through their, uh, divine womb, right? Through their vessel. And so, but also women are reservoirs. They're like a black hole. Goddess Snoop. She's basically the universe, right? One big cosmic uh, yoni, vagina, right? So what, what, what I'm saying is that um, they're reservoirs. So a woman, you know, when you uh, are intimate with a woman, you sleep with her, you're bonding with her physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so especially when you inseminate her, and even if you don't, you're still exchanging uh, DNA. We're not talking about just the semen. Yeah, semen dies off a day, two, three days later outside of the uh, the body and stuff like that. But we're talking about the DNA exchange. DNA is like energy. It can't be destroyed. So uh, they absorb that. So um, 
DNA Correction, DNA can, can, can be destroyed by stream heat and uh, water. She absorbs the DNA from every man she's ever slept with. You see what I'm saying? So uh, this is why it's important why men are interested in a woman's past and women are inter interested in a, in a man's future in terms of his goals and endeavors and ambition, uh, his mission, purpose, etc. They're, they're trying to determine our success in the future and we're trying to and we're trying to determine their history in terms of their past on, you know, how many men have they been with, right? <laughs> you know, because we want, uh, you know, a woman with the fewest, you know, lovers, uh, the youngest, most beautiful, fertile women that we can attract into our lives. And they want the most masculine, you know, successful, strong, attractive men in their, men, in, in their minds uh, uh, so that we can facilitate you know, raising children into adulthood and uh, being successful. And this is just at a primordial uh, level. This is just how we're wired and how we think. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, guys, you know, if, so if she's got two or more kids and, and never been uh, married, I, I would advise against that. I don't, I don't think that that's a, a good way to go. You know, uh, if she were engaged, maybe. I don't know, but definitely she's got to have been married. With two or more children. I mean, she 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 had to have been married to have two or more children. You know, that's that's just where I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it with that. You feel me? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it with that, man. I I had something else to say, but it's you know it's kind of off my mind. You know, I go off the dome with these videos, but if it pops back in, you know, I just come back with another video. All right, so I'm going to end it here, guys. Go ahead and grab the High Value Man t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? I got it with the, the pyramid, the eye of Ra. You know what I'm saying? Also, with the crown. Um, Guys, grab the book, How to Be a High Value Man, The Blueprint to Success with Women. Uh, it's available in ebook and paperback. Got a big surprise coming for you guys in 2021, as you already know. Like, share, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Like my shit, share my shit, subscribe to my shit, and comment on my shit. It helps the channel grow, helps it be seen, you know what I'm saying? And help me on my mission to create high value men all across the world and bring masculinity back like how it's supposed to be in this bitch, right? Um, hey guys, donate to my cash out, you know what I'm saying? Until my month, uh, my, my page gets monetized. I really appreciate it. A dollar, two dollars, five dollars, don't matter. Go ahead and give me a donation if what I'm doing is benefiting you, you know what I mean? Also, guys, if you need a plan of action with a woman, you're having a problem with a woman, man, shoot me an email at ACIE333 at Gmail. We'll talk about it, discuss it. We can do a FaceTime consultation, you know, for a fee. And I give you a plan of action, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Other than that, man, I'm out this bitch. Love and peace. Love, peace. Oh, yeah, here's what I was going to say. Yeah, so let me add on a little bit more. When I say that, uh, um, that she has to have been married to have two children or more. Here's why. Um, I would say before the age of 25, cause here it is, right? Most, most girls, most women, they graduated what? 18, 17, 18, 19 years old, right? Let's say 18. Uh, so from the ages, let's say 19 to like 23, 24, they're in college, right? Now they're out on their own. Now if they, they, if they go to college or whatnot, and especially if they move away going to college, they're going to be out here wilding. You know what I'm saying? And going through their, their whole slut phase and all that or whatever. Especially if you're dealing with a non-spiritual woman. Or you're not dealing with a goddess, a high-value woman. You know what I'm saying? You're just out here dealing with these thoughts and these ratchets. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be doing what they do. You know what I mean? So she just let niggas, you know, running trains on her. And she just out here doing what she do and wilding, you know, and she and she drop a baby because most women, okay, some women they have a mistake or they had a relationship that went bad. Okay, whatever, it, you know it happens. And I don't even say children are a mistake, but anyway, let's say they become sexually active and they have a baby, right? And then um, shit don't work out. Okay, cool. But a lot of women they they learn from that. Like, listen, I can't be out here having all these kids. You know, I want to settle down, want to get married, especially if they conscientious about their biological clock. They know by the time they're 30, they hit the apex and they start, they start to they start to dive. That's that wall that I talked about in a previous video. Their their sexual market value starts to decline very rapidly after 30 if they don't, you know, eat right, exercise, and 
you know, and maintain their, their beauty. But, you know, a woman's great, greatest asset is her, her youth, her fertility, and her beauty. You know what I mean? So this is why they try to, uh, this is why they, this is why they really need to spend from the ages of 18 to 29, 18 to 30, uh, becoming a man's, uh, best option in terms of, you know, getting cuffed or wiped up. So if before they hit 25 and they have two or more children without ever being married, man, nah, bro, you need to go ahead and just cut that off. You know what I'm saying? You can have fun with them and all that, but you can't, can't get serious with it or take us serious, bro. And I wouldn't, um, you know, assume that that liability because, uh, you know, like it or not, a child is an extra responsibility, uh, a.k.a. luggage that you're going to be responsible for. And even in some cases, you know, um, <laughs> you guys get married and, you know, she's got two or more children and, you know, you guys get divorced. You, you, you can end up paying child support for that, too. And alimony and all that. So there's a lot of consequences to these things. A lot of shit you got to weigh out. Remember, I told you guys in a previous video that a woman is a man's, a woman should be a, a man's compliment. Uh, she should make his life, life easier. Uh, a woman should make your life uh, more pleasant. You know what I mean? So to speak. Like, you're already happy and content with who you are, but she should add sauce to your life. You know what I'm saying? She should be an asset to your life and not a fucking liability. You know what I mean? So that's just something to think about. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, before the age of 25, two or more children, never been married. Nah, bro, that's a wrap. Some dubs. I'm out. Peace.